Hi, I'm Gabi from Ray Studios, and this is the Battle of the 50s. So I saw about comparing some of the most affordable 50mm lenses. So I'm going to be comparing the 7 Artisans 55mm f1.4, the Canon 50mm f1.8, Canon 50mm f1.1, the Sony 50mm f1.8, and the Super Takuma 50mm f1.4. So the one thing that these lenses have in common is that they're all about the same focal range. Actually, they're all the same, except for the 7 Artisans, which is actually 55. All the other ones are 50mm, they're all fast primes, and they're all quite affordable. Being the most expensive, the Sony, which is a little bit over $200, and all the other ones, they're somewhere around $100 to $150. About that price. So first, let's take a look at the test chart and how do they perform and how sharp are these lenses. I shoot all these lenses at a minimum um, aperture of f1.8, so we can do that even. First we take a look at the 7 artisans at f1.8, it is very sharp at the center, and when you go to the corners, it actually remains pretty sharp. It is a little bit softer than the center, but it is pretty good very good contrast, very little bit chromatic aberration. When we stop it down to f4, you can see that the center is absolutely perfect and the corners, well, they're pretty much perfect too. And the chromatic aberration pretty much goes away. Now we take a look at the Canon. At f1.8, the center is very sharp and the corners a little bit softer. They're not very soft, they're okay. Chromatic aberration is minimal, and when we stop the Canon to f4, now you can see that the center is perfectly sharp, and the corners are pretty sharp too. Now we take a look at the Camelon. So the Camelon is the one that goes the fastest of all, which you have an aperture of f1.1, but in this picture, like I say, we're shooting all at f1.8. At the center, it's quite sharp, but as soon as you move a little bit to the side of the frame of the picture, you already start to see some softness, so you don't even need to go to the corners. But when you do go to the corners, you can see how soft is this lens. When you stop down to f4, you can see the center got a little bit sharper. Even to the side of the picture, you can see that it got sharper, but when you go deeper into the side and to the corner, even at f4, it is still a little bit soft. At the very edge of the corner, it is quite soft, even at f4. Now we take a look at the Sony. And the Sony, it is at f1.8, quite sharp at the center. And we take a look at the side of the picture, it remains sharp. And at the corners, it is also pretty sharp. It is just a tiny little bit softer than the center. When it stops down to a 4, you can see that it's perfectly sharp at the center. And the corners are also quite sharp. Very good performance for the Sony. Now we take a look at the Takuma 50mm at f1.8. And the center actually is quite sharp. And as you move to the corners, you can see that the contrast is a little bit low, but the sharpness it's quite good actually, it's straight out of f1.8. But when you stop to f4, now you can see how there is a pretty big improvement on sharpness on the corner. And the center looking really good. So, so far on the test chart, I will say that the 7 Artisans and the Sony are some about the two best ones and followed very closely by the Canon. Now, the Super Takuma is not bad considering it is a very old lens. I bought this for like, I don't know, next to nothing online, second hand. It's pretty good actually. The Canon, well, very soft. It's quite soft, even at F4, it's still soft on the corner. So, this is the sharpness test and the contrast. 
Now we're going to take a look on real life situations, so shooting pictures, and in this case, instead of shooting all equal, I shoot at the maximum widest aperture on each lens. So here we have uh, our model Natalia, beautiful model from Russia, and this is a 7 Artisan at f1.4. And you can see that it's very sharp. At right at f1.4, you can see that it's very, very sharp. And you can see that I place my model a little bit to the left, not right at the center, so you can see the sharpness of this lens. And then you can also notice that the bokeh is very nice, very smooth. This lens actually have 14 blades aperture, so it can produce some very pleasant bokeh. The rendition is very nice, but you can see the, that at f1.4 chromatic aberration is quite noticeable. They have this purple fringing, and it's not a deal breaker, but you know, it's something worth mentioning. The Canon, it is also very sharp, and it has very nice colors. I guess it might be one of the nicest colors out of the whole bunch. But you can see how the bokeh is quite distracting. It's a lot of outlying on, on the bokeh. Um, even the bokeh is not very rounded. So the bokeh is not as pleasant as the 7 Artisan. There is also a little bit of chromatic aberration, but a little bit better than the 7 Artisan in that aspect. Now we take a look at the Canlan. And the Canlan, it is decent, very decently sharp at the center, even at f1.1. So if you're gonna be pixel peeping, uh, yeah, it's not very sharp. You can see on the shoulder, on the right shoulder of the model, how it's already start to give up on sharpness. But at f1.1, it is by far the nicest bokeh out of all of them. The bokeh rendition is fantastic. It's not just that it have a lot of bokeh, but the way the, the bokeh reproduction is just really, really nice. Now we take a look at the Sony at f1.8. And the first thing that I notice on the Sony, it is that it is a little bit darker than the other lenses because I never change the settings on any of the lenses. So this is what it looks like. There is also a little bit of chromatic aberration, same as the seven artisans. But remember that we're shooting our f1.8, not f1.4. But all in all, it is a very nice image, and especially it's very sharp. The model is very sharp, and the bokeh is very nice. The bokeh reproduction actually is quite smooth. Now we take a look at the Takuma at f1.4. Um, out of the whole bunch, this lens is the one that I like the least. The colors are weird. It's kind of like, you know, you know what they say about legacy lenses, that they have this distinct color and flavor and, well, this is it. This is what the, the people talk about it. Uh, they have this color that is kind of like long contrast, and maybe you use it for video, it might be very good because it has this cinematic feeling, but it is relatively sharp. And the bokeh rendition, same as the Canon, uh, it's kind of like a distracting kind of bokeh. I don't particularly like it. Even so, it's f1.4. Um, I don't really like the bokeh on this lens, to be honest. There is also a little bit of chromatic aberration. Um, you know, I think color is a matter of, of taste, if, if you like it or not. So there you have it. This is a... Uh, you, you can see by yourself the sharpness, you can see by yourself the bokeh, you can see by yourself the chromatic aberration. I shoot the exact same picture at the exact same time. I never move the camera. Uh, always shooting, shooting, shooting one picture after the other one, both in the test jar and with the live model. Um, some things that I would like to add on is that this lens, the Canon lens, even so it's not very sharp, it is the brightest, not of these lenses, but the brightest lens I ever, ever used in my whole life. It is f1.1, and what is funny about this lens is like people will think, okay, it's not really f1.1, or maybe the transmission, the t-stops. Basically, um, to explain the difference between f-top and t-stops, f-top is how much light hit the front of the lens, and t-stop, how, how much light goes into, into the sensor of the camera. So, for example, you can see how the Sony got a little bit darker. Um, that's because the t-stop is about um, t2.1, but the f2.1, f1.8 but in this case this is f1.1 
and I'm pretty sure that the T-stop is probably T1.12 because it's very, very bright. Um, I put a link in the description below in which I shoot an entire video with this lens in which I was shooting at night and I was doing um, a slow motion, so I have to keep my shutter speed at 250. I didn't have any lights, so this saved the date because being very bright is good for video. Also, the, the aperture doesn't have any clicks to it. That's another advantage. So even though it's not very sharp, you have beautiful bokeh, the colors are fine, and it's very bright. The Canon, in the other hand, uh, the bokeh, I don't really like the bokeh reproduction on this lens, but it is very sharp, and this is crazy cheap. I mean, this is like, what is it? Like I paid like about $100, maybe a little bit more than $100. Uh, I think I paid like $110 with the UV, with the lens hood, and if you have a Canon camera, well, this lens is fantastic because it's also a full frame lens. You can use it with a 5D Mark III, with a 6D. Uh, that's how I use it. But for this test, I use all the lenses with a Sony A6300 because some lenses are cropped, some lenses are full frame. So I wanted to compare all the lenses with one camera. And the only camera that can take all these lenses is the Sony A6300 because you can adapt any lens. But if you have a Canon camera, keep in mind that you can use this for video. It has very fast autofocus. The autofocus is quite accurate, it's quite silent. Uh, the autofocus, in this case, on the Sony uh, with adapter is not that fast, but it's usable. I mean, you can use it. Um, it gives me good results. You cannot eye autofocus, you cannot autofocus in video with the Sony cameras, but all in all, this is very good, it's sharp, uh, we have a, the nicest colors out of the bunch, together with the seven artisans, it's about the nicest color out of all these five lenses. Uh, it's just the bokeh that isn't, mm, I, I don't really like the bokeh. It's not bad, but when you compare it with the other lenses, you can see the difference. Then we have the seven artisans, which is very tiny, but it's heavy. There is a lot of glass pack inside this little lens. Um, the aperture of f1.4, it is quite fast. I guess it, it's not just f1.4, but it's probably like t1.4, t1.5. So it's quite bright as the Canon, but not as much. The Canon is the brightest by far. But what I like, what I really like about this lens is that at f1.4, it is very sharp and the book is beautiful. So optically speaking, this might be the best lens in here. There is just that when you shoot at f1.4, there is quite a lot of chromatic aberration. There is purple fringing. So if there is any uh, uh, contrast, like the purple fringing will start coming up and it will annoy you. It's easy to correct in Lightroom, but I don't know. When you stop it down to f1.8, f2, purple fringing is gone, disappear, no problem. But other than that, Optically speaking, this is a fantastic lens, both the bokeh and the sharpness, it's very good, on point. Then we go to one of my favorites together with the Seven Artisan, and this is the Sony F1.8, this is the crop sensor version. Um, it's really good. Um, if you're gonna use it as a manual lens, the manual lenses are better because the focusing ring is better, the aperture ring is better. But keep in mind that you don't really want to use this as a manual lens because you have amazing, very fast AF. And the AF works on video, tracking, and you have eye autofocus. This is really easy to use. Very good results. It's just like, it's almost on par with the Seven Artisans. Um, of course, this is a lot more expensive. It is twice the price of the Canon. Uh, it's like 30% more expensive than the Seven Arches and the Canlam, a lot more expensive than this one. So yeah, but I guess you, you pay for what you get, you know? Um, this is good, this is really good, the build quality is good, design is kind of nice, have a pretty deep lens hood. Um, there is just a little bit of chromatic aberration when you shoot wide open, same as the Seven Artisans and the Canon and, and the Takuma. Um, it's quite sharp. Straight out of f1.8, even in the corners it's sharp, and the bokeh actually is quite nice. It's just not as bright as the other lenses. I feel like this one is the darkest one. It does something you are, you know, you shoot in low light, that's something you might want to consider. 
And last but not least, we have the Takuma. I, 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 I'm gonna make this clear. I bought this lens online and I probably I can show you the inside of the lens, but it's like, it looks like it's a scratch. There is dust inside. It's very old lens and still works very good. And the picture looks very good. It's quite sharp. And, you know, it have a lot of bokeh at f1.4, but to keep in mind that the bokeh, uh, same as, as the Canon lens, is very distracting. There is like an outline in the, in the bokeh and the bokeh is not very rounded. And another thing to remark about this lens is that they have these weird colors. Hard to explain, but the, the, the colors is maybe, you know, you shoot in video or you like the colors of all lenses. Yeah, it looks more cinematic. It can give you a nicer feeling, but they have weird colors, to be honest. Um, so is that something you are into it? Yeah, this is your lens. Another thing to consider about this lens is that um, if you, you can buy it like me, second hand, is, this is like, I don't know, like maybe $60. So it's even cheaper than this. It's, it's just very cheap, crazy cheap. So for a fully manual lens that you can use for video and pictures, well, it's a pretty good deal. So there you have it. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. Um, please, if you like this video, also give it a thumbs up and subscribe.